Okay, this is uh, Logic Design, uh, the lecture for uh, the 20th of April, Monday, and uh, I'm going to talk about Unit 14 today, which is exactly what the uh, what the syllabus suggests we should be doing. Let, let me just pull that up real quick. And if we pop this over here, so you can see, um, today we're supposed to cover uh, 14 state tables and graphs. I'll do that. Wednesday, I'll talk about how you how we reduce the size of the state tables uh, by eliminating redundant states and then doing an implication chart and implica an impl uh, implication chart to eliminate equivalent states. So we'll talk about those two things. Those are pretty brief. I'm not really going to test you on those per se. Just want you to have seen that. And uh, so, but today will, should be really interesting because now we're going to do we're going to start getting into some more interesting state machines instead of the kind of the very silly basic stuff we've already done. And then after that, I'll do a, we'll do a, we'll, t we'll kind of do a general sequential circuit review on Friday. And then next week, we're just going to cover the remainder of the VHDL stuff and Verilog stuff where we show you how to do um, sequential design within the hardware description languages. We'll talk about a couple of arithmetic circuits. Uh, this will not be tested. Uh, and then I'll cover SM charts, which will be tested and is a fairly important topic. And we'll then have another shot at that on the 4th. And then um, um, then we'll review for the final on the 6th, and we will take the final on the 8th. Let me just say this. One shot at this final. We're not doing two tries. So make sure you pay attention to the details, to the questions, and... Uh, make every effort to, to get it right the first time. Uh, I, you will have a good two and a half, maybe even three hours to take it. So you have plenty of time, but you should start it earlier in the day. So you have, so you're not, you know, late at night trying to, you know, squeeze it in. Uh, although as long as you get the test started before the end of the date, it should be okay. But I'm, I wouldn't count on that. Sometimes I'm always learning new things. All right. So that's how it's going to play out. Uh, and we'll we'll do a lot of review uh, on the sixth. Uh, you'll probably know when you get your final exam score. Uh, I'll, I'll try and give you some guidelines. You need to also tell me on the eighth. Uh, whether or not uh, you're uh, whether or not you're um, going to do pass fail or whether you're going to whether you want the grade and. Uh, I'll try and let you know if you if you're looking good for an A. I'll try and give you some cutoffs and this sort of thing, um, but I, I won't know until you finish the final, and I and you have to decide by the eighth, so it's going to be a little challenging. All right. Well, anyway, um, so that's how it's going to go down. All right. Moving on. So let's um, let's get started with this. And we'll put me back in this if we can and shrink me down. All right. So we're going we're gonna to look how you go from a problem, problem statement to a state graph and then a state table. And then once you get to a state table, the rest of the problem is pretty much turning the crank. And so hopefully you'll get to the point where once you get the state graph done, <clears throat> you're good to go. And the rest of it is just going through step one, step two, step three, whatnot. We're going to talk about a sequence detector and a complex pattern detector. So the first one, the first problem, uh, this 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 problem will definitely be in some form very similar problem uh, like this on the test. Uh, I almost always put that on the test, and I will give you one like it. And um, I don't know exactly how we'll do this, but for sure we will. Uh, for sure we will. Uh, test you on this in some way. So this is important, so pay attention. All right, so we have a sequence detector. And again, uh, if we look at the box, uh, it's basically uh, it's basically got uh, a circuit inside this box. It has an input X, an output Z, and a clock. This is very similar to how many, 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 many circuits are. They might have more inputs, might have more outputs, but basically almost a, a huge quantity of digital devices fall into this sort of 
um, this block diagram. And here's a typical sequence. And that's one of the things we always want to do. We want to, we want to sort of write in a typical sequence so we understand how, how this is supposed to work. Okay, so let's finish with the description. We'll come back to that. It reads in input sequence x, 0, 1, 0. Now, how does it know when the next x is available? Well, it knows when the next x is available based on the clock. The clock tells the circuit when to read the input for a new value. So every time the clock ticks, the x needs to be a new x value. And so, so these are just constraints on the circuit. When you make the circuit, you need to build in these features. All right, we're not going to look at the upstream part where the x is provided. Who knows? That's coming from some source, and it has to be synchronized to the clock. Otherwise, uh, you, how would you know whether you got two zeros, you know, zero, zero, or whether it was just one zero that was continuous the whole time? The only way you would know that you had two zeros is because the clock ticks in between these two zeros. And it ticks again, now it's a one, ticks again, and now it's something else. And, and the circuit knows every time it ticks that, it, that it's supposed to be seeing a new value for x. And if that's not true, the circuit has no way of knowing that it's a lie. So, uh, so, so the circuit's dependent upon the authenticity of the input. <clears throat> okay, so because we're going to read this input sequence in order, x0, x0, x1, and because we're looking for a target, in this case, the target we're looking for is the sequence 1, 0, 1. So when we just see a 1, is that the last one of 1, 0, 1? Is it the first one of 1, 0, 1? Or what is it? So we, without knowing what's happened in the past, <clears throat> We can't, we really can't process this. So that immediately implies there is a requirement to have some knowledge of previous inputs. And that's the whole definition of sequential design, where the, the, current, the current input and the current output are not determined by just the present x, but also by some history of previous x's. Might be a lot of history, might be a little history, and it's all synchronized with the clock. So that, that's the classic sequential circuit, all right? Now, our target in this case is 101. One. So we don't have to re remember a whole lot, but we do have to remember the last two values, and then we have to pay attention to the present x that we just got. And if our last two values are 10 and our present x is a 1, that's the target. So how would we do this? Well, the Normally, the way we sort of think this through is we do a, either a state graph, or you'll see uh, uh, when we get towards the end, you'll see that we can do a, a, a state machine chart, which is very similar to a state graph, but slightly more regimented and slightly more useful. Uh, and when we get this target, our output z will change from 0 to 1. And it'll stay that way for one clock cycle. The next clock cycle, since we no longer have a target, will go back to z equals zero. And the other question is, what kind of network that are we going to build? In this case, we're going to do a mealy network. And we're not told how many flip-flops, so we have to figure that out. And we're not told to reset after we detect, which means that we could have overlapping targets. So let's look. Let's look at our test sequence and our circuit. So here's our test sequence, zero, zero, one. Okay, so zero, we have nothing. Zero, we have nothing. One, we have what could be the first one of one, zero, one. Then we get another one. Obviously, we can't have one, one. That's not part of the one, zero, one sequence. So now we start over, but we still have the first possible one of one, zero, one. Then we get a zero, okay? Then we get a one. Bingo! Now we have our target. So z equals one. Then we get a one, all right? Zero. We get a zero. Then we get a one still no target, zero, now we have the first two items, one, bingo, we have another target. Now here's what's tricky. Notice now we get a zero and then another one. So that represents another one, zero, one that overlaps with this one, zero, one. And so we make Z output a one again. So that, and then we get a couple of zeros and we're done. All right, so that's what our test sequence looks like. So we can have overlapping targets. That, that the, the last one of a sequence could be the first one of a new sequence. 
might not be. In this case, it wasn't. In this case, it was. All right. So here's how we do the state graph. We normally just start with our initial state. We always have to have some kind of starting point. And so we have S0. S0 means we have nothing detected. We don't have a 0. We don't have a 1. We don't have anything. We just, we're just sitting here, nothing detected. Now, if we get a 0, we still have nothing detected because our target is 1, 0, 1. So we're looking for 1, 0, 1. And we're looking for that first one. So if we get a one, if we get a zero, we're staying here. But if we get a one, then we're going to go on to the next one. Now, whenever we do a state graph on a mealy, we we there it's different than a state graph on a more. On a mealy, the the uh, outputs are associated with the next x that comes in. So we're in states s zero. We get our next x, which is a zero, and obviously we don't have a target. So we'll output a z equals zero. So the red is the input x, and the blue is the output z. And the inputs, the the outputs are associated with the links in a melee. In a more, the outputs are not associated with the links; they're associated with the actual node s zero. Anytime you're in s zero, if this were a more circuit, we would be putting out whatever the output should be. In this case, probably a zero. All right. Now, what happens if we get a one? Well, if we get a one, we do have the potential first item in a target okay so since we have the potential first item in a target we will go to another link we'll go to another node because we have to remember that so when we're in s0 what we remember is we have nothing but if we get a one uh let's see oh oh i covered it up i guess that was the deal no i don't know So here we go. We we have if we get a one, man. Okay, uh, it's, something's not working. Uh, okay, I, I I maybe you can't see me. I think it's waiting for me to do this. Okay, so so we get a one. We still not put a zero because we only have the first item in our target, not all three items. But we go to S one where we remember that we have the first one. Now, what if we get another one? Well, that is not the second item in our sequence. So we just stay in S1 because we still do have the first potential one. Okay, so if we get a one, uh, we'll stay here. But if we get a zero, that is our second item. So then we're going to go to S2. In S2, we remember that we have the second item. And again, if we get a one, we'll stay there. So. So zero, we still have nothing. Of one, we have the first item. Another one, we still have the first item. But if we get a zero, now we have the second item. And then if we get one, one more one, then, then we will output, we'll output a one. That's the blue. So we get a one. That's the x. We'll output a one. And notice we'll go to S1. Now why would we go to S1? Well, we go to S1 because we want to remember that we have the first one, potentially, of the next sequence. Remember our little test sequence? We can have overlapping. So 1, 0, 1. If we get 0, 1, we have another sequence. So we, we want this one to count, potentially, as the first one in a new sequence. And since it is our target, we output a 1. Now, what if, we, what if we're at S2 and we get a 0? Where do we go? Well, now we have 1, 0, 0, which is not our target. And in fact, we're sort of redu we don't have anything for the next sequence. We don't have even the first one because we have a zero as the last value in. And so we have to go back to S0, output a zero. We have nothing detected. All right. Now, if you notice, we count whenever we have uh, one input, we need to have a count for two the two possibilities that the input one is that the input zero and one is the, the inputs one. If we had two inputs, we'd have to count for four possibilities that the inputs were both zero, that the the one input was zero and one was one, and then the other was one and the other was zero, and then they're both one. Four possibilities: zero, 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 one, one, zero, and one, one. And if you have three inputs, then you have to count for six. So, so when you draw your state graph, if you have one input, you have if, if you have to have two links out of every node. It could be the same, but so you could count two paths. But but you have to account for both possibilities. Where do you go if you get a one? Where do you go if you get a zero? 
On the other hand, if you have no inputs like we did in our counter, you automatically go from S0 to S1, S1 to S2, S2 to S3, S3 to S4, and so forth. You don't, you don't, there's no, there's no possibility that it'll vary because there's no inputs. All right, so here's our complete state graph because if you count, we have two outputs out of every node. Out of S0, we have if we get a 0 and if we get a 1. In S1, if we get a 1 and if we get a 0. And in S2, if we get a 0 and if we get a 1. And if you do that, if you're right back to S1, then, uh, then if you get a 0 and a 1 again, you'll have another target. All right. So, so that's the state graph. Now, how do we translate this into the state table? Well, it's very, very easy. First off, all you have to do is look at the nodes. We have one, two, three nodes. So there's three states that we have to account for. And so our state graph is going to be, uh, it's going to have three lines, S0, S1, and S2. And then we have one input, so we have to account for what, where do we go if x is 0, where do we go if x is 1. Well, if x is 0, we go to S0. If x is 1, we go to S1. That's on the first row. And the output, the output's 0 in both cases. So here's our state table. S0 is our first state. If we get a 0, we're staying there. A 1, we're going to 1. And if we get a 0, we're outputting a 0. If we get a 1, we're outputting a, a, also a 0, regardless. Now, let's say we move on to S1. Okay, so we're in S1. If we get a 0, we're, we're going to S2, because that's our second item in the sequence. If, on the other hand, we uh, get a 1, we didn't get the second sequence, so we just stay there. And in both cases, we don't have a target, so we're putting out zeros. S2, if we get a 0, then we, we have nothing. So we're going back to the start state, which is S0, which indicates we have n n don't even have the first item of a possible uh, three-item sequence. But if we get a 1, then we do have a target, so we have to output a 1. But, uh, but we're going to the node that's going to remember that we have potentially the first one of a new sequence, and that would be S1. Now we've accounted for all, all of our possible states, all of our possible present states and our next states, and there's, a, there's the output. The only place we have a 1 is where we need to detect that target. Okay, so, so you can see this state graph translates directly into this state table. Now, what's the next step? Okay, the next step, from here on out, it's, it's basically a matter of turning the crank and, and cranking out these problems. So the rest of these steps you should just have down pat in your brain. Uh, the, only, the first, only coming up with that state graph is the tricky part. You have to think your way through the problem to do this state graph. But after that, it's merely a matter of, of calculations. So the first thing we have to do is we have to encode the states with some type of flip-flop encoding. We call that flip-flop state assignment. Now, if we, only, if we have three states, what's, what's the minimum number of flip-flops it would take to encode three states? Well, we can code two states with one flip-flop, with two flip-flops, we can encode four states. So two flip-flops would be enough. One would not be enough. So we need at least two flip-flops. Now, we could, we could do as many as four states with two flip-flops, but we don't have four states. We just have three. So two flip-flops will be sufficient. And uh, that, so we'll call the flip-flops A and B, and we'll, we'll do some, some way to assign the, the flip-flop coding to represent each state. Now, Usually what we do in the early going is just straight binary order. But you'll see when we talk, when we cover, um, uh, when we cover uh, chapter 15, that there are some rules that you should consider because uh, how, you choose, how you choose the flip-flops to encode the state can affect the, the hardware, how much hardware you have. Now, in some cases we care, in some cases we don't, just like we do for minimizing a truth table. If we're putting it into an FPGA, we may not care. If we're building a, a, a very fancy integrated circuit, we may want to shrink our foot, our, 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 the footprint of our little piece down to the smallest, smallest possible size we can. And in that case, we may very well want to shrink things down. So we might want to look at uh, several different uh, possible uh, uh, flip-flop state assignments um, so, that, uh, so that we can potentially take advantage of uh, of less 
less hardware if there's if there's an assignment that generates less hardware, which there can be. So uh, so it's good to look. The only problem with that is, and you'll see this when we get to chapter 15, that once you get past four states, the the number of possibilities gets quite large, and five and six and seven states it just explodes, so that there's just uh, millions of possible possible uh, flip flop state assignments, and you really can't uh, you can't check all of them. But with three and four states, uh, there's only three different uh, uh, hardware results, and and so there's actually 24 different ways you can assign four states, or three states, but there's only three non-equivalent assignments essentially where the hardware it might it it shifts around but this but you have the same number of gates and inputs um, so so we can look at those but we'll, we will we'll get to that in chapter 15 for now we're just going to do state binary assignment so we have two flip-flops a and b we will code state s0 flip-flop a is zero flip-flop b is zero we'll con code state one flip-flop a is zero flip-flop b is one and we'll code state two Flip-flop A is 1, and flip-flop B is 0. So that's 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0. And then we'll have a fourth flip-flop condition of 1, 1, which is a don't care. It should never occur. And therefore, we can we can pick the next states as don't cares and the outputs as don't cares. And it may help us with our k-maps. When we get ready to do the k-maps, the k-maps are going to have three variables. They're going to have an input x and, and a a flip-flop A and a flip-flop B. So A, B, and X. Those are going to be the variables. And we'll make X the higher order variable because of the way it lines up here in our state table. And, and we'll do we'll put X on top and A and B down the side. And I'll show you in just a minute. All right. So let's do that flip-flop state assignment. S0 is 0, 0. S1 is 0, 1. S2 is 1, 0. And the don't care is 1, 1. And, uh, and then we take this encoding for states and we substitute it in. So, so this is a equals zero, b equals zero. That's s one. I'm sorry, s zero. This is a equals zero, b equals one. That's s one. A equals one, b equals zero. That's s two. And one one is a don't care. So we put don't cares down here. Now, notice that we have uh, we have if x is zero, we're going we're going to stay in state s zero. So we put in the coding for it zero zero. If x is 1, we're going to go to state s1. The coding for that is 0, 1, so we put in 0, 1. So, we, so note, this whole column is when x is 0. This whole column is when x is 1. And uh, this indicates the a value, and this piece here is the b. Same with here, a value, b value. And, uh, and then on the output, we have a column for x0 and a column for x1. So we're going to have three k-maps when it's all said and done. We're going to have a k-map for the A flip-flop D input, for the B flip-flop uh, D sub B input, and we're going to have a k-map for the output Z. And they're all going to be three variable k-maps because this is a mealy problem. If this were a more, we wouldn't have columns here in our output. We would just have one column because the output would be totally dependent on whatever state you're in, not the combination of your state plus your next input. But in Amelie, it is a function of your current state plus the new input, the new x, whatever's coming in. All right. <coughs> so now we can take this, when we take these out, when we want to do the, the a input, we take, so this is the a column here for x is 0, and this is the a column here for x is 1. And then here's the b column, and then this is just the uh, x is 0 and x is 1. And since a and b are down the side, this, this whole row is where a and b are 0. This is a is 0, b is 1. Is a, a and b are both. Uh, a is 1, b is 0. And a and b are both 1. Well, I know in the k-map we have to flip these rows. And if we had a four-variable map, we'd have to flip columns. But we don't. We only have a three-variable map. So let's look at the maps. So here we go. So we take, we take the, uh, the first one. It should be 0, 1, don't care, 0. So this is for a. 0, 1, don't care, 0. Hmm. Oh, sorry. 0, 1, 0, don't care. And then the next column, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, don't care, 0. 0, 0, don't care, 0, or 0, 0, 0, don't care, however you want to say it. 
but this this is the last variable here so, so you know this is a and b are zero zero a and b zero one a and b one one and a and b one zero so the one one row is uh, is this row here so that's why the don't cares are there and that's true for all k maps so this is the one for the a input the d sub a this is the one for the flip flop b input d sub b and this is one for the output z so z equals the solution here which is xa here uh, uh, the a input or the next state of b should be x the next state of a should be x prime b so here we have to have one gate here we have to have a one end gate here we have just just have x going in all right so here's what the circuit looks like there's our one and gate here's our other and gate and there's x going in by itself x prime and b and x and the output from a and that's all there is to it we have now developed a network if we if we clock in x's in this case uh, x goes in here x goes in there and x prime goes in there and then b is just a connection from flip-flop b we just bring this wire out and put it right in there if we did that uh, and and we sent in a sequence of zero 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 one zero one on that on that on that one zero one on that last one z would be a one and all the other times z would be zero and this circuit would detect that it's pretty cool it's very powerful and this is the kind of thing an application where this might pop up uh, maybe the uh, the CIA is monitoring uh, a data stream from Russia or who knows where and uh, and they see, and they're looking for a certain sequence. Um, maybe they're wait, looking for an ASCII spelling of bomb or detonate or something like that. And uh, as the data stream's coming in, they're scanning it with this uh, piece of hardware, and boom, it uh, it picks up this uh, match and triggers an alarm. And so then they can go pay more attention to it. All right, so it could really work. All right, so um, now let's do the exact same thing with a more. Now, uh, keep in mind, two AND gates is all the hardware we had to have. No other hardware. And also keep in mind, notice how this output at Z does depend on X directly and not just the flip-flops, which means it wasn't a good candidate for, um, well, not in, uh, never mind, which basically, this is classic mealy and when we do the more you'll notice it's going to take a lot more hardware but the, the problem with the mealy is that you can only read it at certain times and that certain time is right before the next active clock edge all right so let's do the more so we'll do the state graph again and uh and so here's our first node s0 now notice our output z is associated with the node here because it's more it only depends on what what the flip-flop setting is and the flip-flop setting determines what 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 state we're in so we're in state s0 fine the output is always zero when we're in state s0 and it never varies and we don't have to wait till the next input to find out what it's going to be all right now in s0 much more much like in the mealy state graph if we get a zero we're staying there and if we get a one we're going on to s1 so a zero we stay there and a one we go on to s1 now notice there's only the red there's no blue here because the blue is associated with our state it is not associated with the links anymore all right we're in s1 and uh, we could get a zero or we could get a one if we get a one we'll stay here if we get a zero we'll go on to s2 all right so a zero will take us to s2 we'll still output a zero and a one will loop us back in and we'll stay here then uh, the final thing is we can get a one or a zero if we get uh, if we get a if we get a zero that means we don't have a target if we get a one we do have a target but we have to have a node that has one as an output so we, so it takes a one more node we have to have an s3 node where the outputs one this represents the target and we go there we go there on a we go there on a one now what what do we do in s3 we have the target but we also have to remember that that one that made the target could be the first one in the next sequence so in this case 
we don't go back to S1 because S1 we don't output it that there, that we have a target. We have we have the output here of one z equals one. We need that. But we also have to remember that just like in S1, we might have the first one in the next sequence. So in S3, if if uh, if we get a zero, we're going to S2, which says that we have now a one and a zero. So we have two items in our target sequence. But it, but in S3, if we get another one, we don't stay here because that would indicate we, we have another target. But we don't. So we have to go to a node where we don't have a target indicated. And if we get another one, we would be going back here. So on a one, we'll go back there. So, we're, so we already have the first one in the next target. If we get another one, okay, now, we, now, all we, now we've just got a one in the next target. But we don't have a, we, an output of one meaning we just indicated a target. That would not be true. Okay, so anyway, this completes the state graph. If you check, every node has two paths out of it, and that's what's required, either melee or a more. Notice that all the links only have a single digit, which represents the new input X. And uh, notice that the outputs, the blues, are associated with the nodes and not with the links anymore. That's the difference. Now, when we do the state table, uh, we just take the same information, but we do have a one more one more line. So we have S0, S1, S2, and S3. Now notice our output, we just have one column here. And that one column, the only place we have a one is when we're in this state S3. But just like before, when X equals 0, we stay in S0. When X equals 1, we go to S1. S1... We, when x equals 0, we, we go to s2, and if we equals 1, we stay there. If in s2 we get uh, 0, then we go back to s0, whereas if we get a 1, we go on to s3. And then finally in s3, if we get a, uh, a 0, that's our second item, so we go to s2. But if we get a 1, then we go to s1 to remember that we, okay, we still have the first item, but we don't want to output 1 anymore because we don't have another target. We just had the target one time. And here's our and here's our here's our flip flop encoding. S zero zero zero. S one is zero one. S two is one zero. And S three is one zero. So this is not quite straight binary. We flip these two rows just to make it a little more convenient to put it into the K map. So um, so you have to pay attention. Straight binary would have been zero 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 one one zero one one at the bottom, but we moved one one up here. All right. So that being said, now we just extract this into, uh, we change, we substitute in the, the coding, 0, 0 for S0, 0, 1 for S1, 1, 1 for S2, and 1, 0 for S3. Yeah, yeah I don't know, Some, I think that, anyway, it's good. Okay, so we substitute those in, now we have the A and B for our present states, the A and B for X equals 0, the A and B for X equals 1, and there's no A and B on the output. We just, uh, there's no, M well, in that, yeah, there's, there's just the output. Now, in this case, since the output only has one column, our K-map for our output is only going to be a two-variable output. It's only going to be A and B. X doesn't play into it because it's a more. X only plays in when it's a melee. But these are going to be three variables, X and A and B. And we'll do three variable maps just like we did before. So here they are. Here's our X map uh, for A. Here's our input for A. Here's our input for B. And here's our output Z. So Z equals A, B prime. But notice B prime, we have one, two, three, four gates to make up B. And here we have one, two, three, four gates to make up A. It's actually fairly complicated. Okay, so hopefully that's really clear. Okay, so given all that, now we just go to the K maps. Or sorry, now yeah, now we substitute in, do the K maps. Here are the K maps, and now we generate our hardware. So the output function is just z equals a b prime. Doesn't depend on x. 
and then here are the k-maps. When we do the k-maps, notice we have a bunch of terms. So look at all the gates. One a little one AND gate for Z, but look at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, plus this one. Nine gates to implement the more, and only two gates to implement the melee. So what you notice is that the melee network is almost always more efficient in terms of hardware. But it has the problem that you can only read the output at that critical time just before the next clock edge. All right? So that's pros and cons. But a lot of times we will use melees just because the hardware is much simpler and we'll deal with the complexity of when to read the outputs. All right. So, um, so let's see. So where are we in this process? So we're 35 minutes in. I think I'll take about 10 minutes and do just a little bit more. So, um, so here's how we do the design, just to review it. But we're going to go over it a bunch of times, so don't panic if you don't get it this time. So we do the problem definition where we relate the inputs to the outputs. And we, we typically construct a state graph. And then we, take, we create the state table from that. Sometimes we do the state table first. It depends. Then we reduce the state table to a minimum number of states. And we'll cover this in 15. But we're going to look at a problem uh, coming up where we're going to do this sort of uh, uh, ad hoc. And then we determine how many flip-flops we need to uh, encode the number of states we have once we've reduced them. And then we substitute in the coding to turn the state table into a transition table. And we do that by just substituting in the flip-flop state assignments. And then we extract the information off the transition table into k-maps, assuming we don't have too many variables. And we derive the next state equations and the output equations. And we implement them in hardware. And then we normally want to simulate the design so that we can show that it really does work. Or maybe we'll build a little model and run it, depending on how complex it is. All right, so let's look at one more problem. This is very similar to the one we just did, with the, but, but with one little twist. First off, uh, we're going to always read in four inputs and then reset. So that's, a, that's one difference. In our other one, we didn't reset. We just kept reading in inputs and looked for a sequence, and, there, and we allowed overlapping sequence. In this one, there's no overlapping sequences allowed. But we do have, instead of one target, we have two targets. We're looking for 0, 1, 0, or 1, 0, 0, 1. Now, later on in the problem, we'll notice that the last two items in the sequences are similar, which allows us to, to do some state reduction. And we'll do that. But we're initially just going to do it without thinking about that. And then we'll go back and see if we can save some states by realizing that some states are, are essentially redundant. And it turns out this, this falls into the category of problems where we can eliminate redundant states. And we'll cover that in, in chapter 15. All right. So, uh, so if we get one of these sequences, we're going to make Z a 1. Otherwise, Z is going to be 0. And it's going to reset after each group of four inputs. So this is, this, and this is much more typical. Normally, we, we are looking for groups of inputs. Not always, but, but it's more typical to have a fixed number of inputs, that, and then we're going to search that, and then we're going to have a fixed number of inputs and whatnot. All right, and we're going to do a melee machine again. Now, here's our little test sequence. And I didn't write a block diagram, but we have one input x, one output z, and a clock, just like in our last problem. OK, so x, the first group of four is 0, 1, 0, 1, which, should, which matches the test the, one of the targets. So the last value. Z gets a 1 because it's a target. Then we get in 0, 0, 1, 0, not one of our targets. So we just have straight zeros. Then we get in 1, 0, 0, 1, which is the other target. And now we get a 1 for it as well. And then we have 0, 1, 0, 0, which is nothing. And we crash then. So, so we, we're always bringing in groups of 4 and comparing them to these two targets. And if we get either target, we output a 1. Otherwise, we output zeros. All right. So let's do this problem. Um, OK, I think I've explained enough. So uh, here are the two possible targets. And uh, let's see. So we're going we're gonna to do, do a state graph. So here's how we start with S0. 
and we're going to trace down both target paths and then we'll fill in uh, what's left. So we're going to assume we're getting a target first and we'll go both ways. All right, so we're in S0. If we get a 0 uh, or if we get a 1, we're going over here to S1 because that's the first item in that target. If we get a 0, then we're going to go over. Oh, sorry, okay. If we get a 1, we're going here. If the next one's a 0, we're going to S2 to remember. S1 tells us you got the first one. S S2 tells us you got one zero now. S3 tells us you got one zero zero. And finally, S4 tells us that we we have our target. But notice because we reset after four values in one two three four, we're back to S0. But in the case where we get a one down here. That would be one zero zero one, so one zero zero one. Where we get that one, we output a one. If we got one zero zero zero, that's not the target, so we output a zero. But we still go back to we still reset after four values. All right, let's do the other side. If we get a zero initially, we're going to S four, output a zero. If we get a one after that, we're going to S five, but still output a zero. If and if we get a zero after that, then we're we're going to S six, and st and and uh, but still outputting a zero. So our, now our target is zero one zero. Now if we get another one, it'll be the target, but we're still going back to S zero. Or if we get a zero, it won't be the target, but we're still going back to S zero. So we're going back to S zero on a one, and output a one, but on a zero we're going back here anyway, and, but we're outputting a zero. All right, so this this solves this solves it for for the two targets. But notice uh, S0 we have two paths out, and S3 we have two paths out. It's the same path, one one and zero, uh, one with a one output and zero with a zero output. And here we have one with a one output and zero with a zero output. So same there. But uh, we don't have two paths for S1 or S2 or S4 or S5. So we haven't accounted for the case where we don't have a target. So let's say if we get to uh, S4 uh, and our next value is not a 1, it's a 0, then we're going to S7. If we get to S1 and our next value is not a 0, it's a 1, then we can't have a target, so we're, out, we're going to go to S7. And then from S5, uh, well, from S7, no matter what, we're going to S8. From S5, if we don't get a 0, we get a 1, we're going to S8. And if, from S2, if we don't get a 0, we get a, we get a 1, we're also going to S8. And then let's see, from S8, so, so 1, 2, 3. From S8, regardless, we're going back to S0 on a 1 or a 0, and we definitely won't have a target. All right. So on a zero back here, on a one back here, and in both cases, we output a zero, no target. All right, now, if you look at this graph and spend a lot of time kind of thinking about it, what you can notice is that, uh, is that there's a couple of paths that are sort of similar. Notice from S5, on a zero, we go to S6, and on a one, R0, we go back here, but on a one, we output a one. Notice here from S2, on a zero, we go to S3. And on a 1, we output a 1, and a 0, we go back here. Exactly the same. So, th so there's some redundancy between 5 and 6 and 2 and 3. Um, so, but, but what we could do, this is, we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We have 9 nodes. So we could do a state table with all 9 uh, states, but that would take up, um, that would take up a fair amount of room. Uh, or a fair amount of that that would take more flip flops and more hardware. So we want to reduce the states to a smaller number if we can, and we can by just uh, just paying attention here. So S zero to S one. So we do the same thing as before. Go here on a one, go there on a zero, and then if we get a zero, we're going on to here, and another zero, we're going on to there. But here, if we get a one. We're going to S2 because the last two steps, 0, 1, is the same for both of our targets. Let's see, and I probably should put, I'm going to put these targets in here. Let me, let me just do that. 
Um, take me one second to do this. Um, yeah. Okay, and then I'm going to do that. Okay, yeah. All right, so we'll do this again. Sorry. So I wanted to put the targets in here. And when you do this whole thing, what you'll notice is that that uh, we've we've eliminated a couple of states. So now instead of nine states, we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, so we only have seven states and not nine. So that's that's a that's a that's a nice advantage, and also uh, it saves us one whole flip flop because we can do uh, we can do eight states or in this case seven states with three flip flops, but nine states would have taken four. All right, so now we put this into our state table with when we only have one two zero one two three four five six or seven states. And here's our next eight, and here's our output. Remember, because it's melee, we've got two columns over here, one for x equals 0 and one for x equals 1, because our outputs are associated with our links. And I should have made the outputs blue and the inputs red like I did on the previous one. I switched them on this for some reason. Uh, I'll switch that later maybe. All right, but anyway, now, what's the next step? Okay, so we did the state graph. We translated, trans we, did, we thought our way through. We reduced a couple of states. So now we have our state table. We reduced it to seven to seven states, and now we have to do flip-flop state assignment. So we we're going to code our states. We can do straight binary assignment. Uh, A B C zero one two three four five six, and I don't care for seven. So we do that. So we'll substitute those in, and so zero 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 is S one, and we have all the states coded here. Oh, sorry, zero 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 is S zero, and then now we're going to extract it into Kmaps. Now, what are our variables here? Well, we have three flip-flops A, B, C, and one input X. So our variables are X, A, B, and C. And we're going to make a four-variable map with the top row with a high-order variable being X, and then A and X on the top, or X and A on the top, and B and C down the side. And we'll just extract this column here, and this column here will be for the A input, a, the D sub A. The middle columns on both sides will be for the D sub uh, B, and the rightmost columns will be D sub uh, C. And then the uh, then our output will just be uh, these two columns here. All right. So here's our here's our K map for A. Here's our K map for B. Here's our K map for C, and here it is for our output D. Now you can see. That even though this is a melee, uh, there's a little bit of hardware involved here. We have, what, uh, four gates here. One, two, three, four, five gates here. One, two, three, four gates here. And one gate here. So uh, so that's, so there's a fair number of gates, but it's, uh, but it's a more complicated problem, too. And that's what it looks like. And notice the output Z does depend on X because it's a melee has x in the equation. Whereas if this were more, we'd have even a lot more circuitry than this, and but the z would not have an x in its output. It would only depend on the flip-flops. All right. So we have a problem. We do a state graph. We take the state graph and we uh, turn it into a state table. We then um, We then look at the state table. We see if we can reduce our states. We'll cover that in the next chapter. And then we do flip-flop state assignment and substitute in our coding for each state in terms of some number of flip-flops. Usually we use the minimum number. There are some cases where we don't, and we use uh, some unusual assignments. We call one hot and other things. Anyway, uh, so, so we do flip-flop state assignment, and then, uh, then we generate our k-maps, and we uh, can, can basically minimize them Uh, get the best solution off and 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 write our hardware, write our schematic, and that's it. Okay.
So, uh, so we'll we'll pick up with uh, unit fifteen then after this. And I don't think, uh, yeah, I think this is a uh, this is another example. And we'll come back. Yeah, we'll come back and we'll cover this. Uh, we'll cover this later. All right. So that pretty much covers it. Hopefully that was straightforward and made sense. If it didn't, play it again and listen to it. There will be a little bitty short quiz to take after this exam. And uh, we will see you then on Wednesday. And I think I planned a help session. Uh, I think the help session is scheduled for... See, I think we scheduled that help session. Uh, let me look. Uh, noon on Wednesday. So at 12 noon on Wednesday, I'll send a link out probably tomorrow. Um, and you can come to the help session noon on Wednesday and ask questions. And we'll talk to you later.